Hey, everybody, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm looking at Quiet House, an upcoming cooperative game of limited communication and deduction, and disclaimer that I was sent an early review copy of this one. So Quiet House is a solely cooperative game, so I'll just briefly explain how the rules work, kind of do a little rules teach, and then give you some thoughts on it. So you have these five objects that are these nice wooden meeples, and each of them has to start out in a different row and a different column from all other objects. So you can never have at any time objects occupying the same row or column. And additionally, the little rat uh, mouse figure here has to always be on one of these spaces with a dot on it. And how the game works is players will sit at different corners, like this corner we're sitting out now, and you'll take these cards that depict one of the five objects, and there will be dark cards and light cards, and on the sides of the house that have light, because you're literally putting the board right inside of the game box, on the sides that have light, you put two light cards like that, on the sides that have dark, you put two dark cards, and in that way, you will have two cards secretly taken out, one light and one dark, and then you'll have these pairing of cards. And what that means is to win the game, the players have to cooperatively get the objects to be in the correct placement. The correct placement being the closest object to this wall. Okay, so like the object card that's right here, this wall, the closest to it, not necessarily right next to it, but just closer than any other object, has to be in this case the mirror and the mouse. So like if I did that, where the mirror is closest and the mouse is next closest, I would complete that one. And then here, the rookish kind of one has to be closest. So let's just say that we had like all of these way farther away. And then the mouse has to be even closer than that. Okay, so there we go. Right now, with this current configuration, we would be completing this and this, but you got these other ones that you can't see, right? These different configurations, and you have to work together without knowing what other people have to uh, get all the objects to be in the correct placements. So uh, that's the basic idea of the game. Now, how the game actually works, you have this timer deck that starts with a five and goes down to a one. In each of the five numbers, you've got one copy of each of the objects. And at the start of your turn, you flip the top card, and this is the object you cannot move. And then you get to make a single move with one of the remaining objects. And this is your score, by the way. So if you win the game while a five is still on top, then you get five points. If there's a four, you get four points, all the way down to one point. So the faster you beat the game, the better you score. Now, what I said you do on your turn, moving one object, is a lot more interesting than it might seem, because first of all, as I said, objects cannot share the same row or column, but then they also have their own unique way of moving. So the castle one does move like a rook as far as it wants in any one of the orthogonal directions. The rat can rotate to any other circle. The monkey can swap with another piece, swap places with it. The candlestick can move up to three times in any sort of queen style direction, any direction it likes. And the mirror, interestingly, uses the movement of the card that was flipped and that you can't move for the turn. See how this mirror equals candelabra at the bottom here thing is? And then after each person makes their move, every other player gets to be like, Mrr, and say whether they liked it or didn't, because besides that, there's no communication in the game. Additionally, on your turn, if everything you can see is already correct, you can show everybody your heart instead of taking your regular turn to be like, basically, hey, I'm good. Y'all uh, solve the rest of this. And if everybody has hearts uh, when that check happens, then you win the game. Now, one really cool thing I have to mention before I get to my actual review thoughts is that each of the pieces has an alternate movement side if you use this little spider web side thing. And you also have to flip the board because it changes how the mouse's uh, little spots are. But see, then the rook moves like a knight. Uh, the candelabra has to jump exactly three places instead of having more uh, kind of control over it. And then the monkey has to jump to be diagonally adjacent to another piece. So yeah, this uh, really ratchets up the difficulty and gives the game a lot of variety in how you play it. And that's basically all the rules of Quiet House. It's a straightforward game. So what do I think about it? The cautions and the likes. I'll start with the positives. I think the movement is really interesting, especially with the different options available to you. So trying to leverage the right pieces to move them in the right way, even when you know exactly what you need to do. Like we've had games where we're like, okay, okay, I got it. Cause you know, somebody has shown their heart and now we know what they want and I can see what I want. So we'll have games where we know exactly where every piece needs to be, but still just the tactical puzzle of getting them there with these movement limitations and options can be pretty compelling and interesting. 
I'll also give the game credit for being incredibly fast to set up, incredibly quick to play. You, again, just put the board inside the box, shuffle these things up and put them in the correct places, randomly throw down the pieces, uh, shuffle up the timer deck, and you're ready to go. And then the entire gameplay takes, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. It's very fast. It's also pretty straightforward to explain, especially on the easier movement side. I played it with my 12-year-old, no problem at all. And I think the pieces are pretty attractive. The wooden meeples are great. The little things that slot in to show what you're trying to achieve. I think it all works well. Now, some caveats and concerns. A big one is swinginess. We've had games of this where just by random chance, the pieces have mostly already been in the correct spots, and we've won in like a couple of rounds and got the highest score. And we've had games where the pieces were <laughs> totally in the opposite direction that they needed to be, and it was very tough to get them to where they uh, could go. And we would uh, sometimes lose those games or only score one point. So I did feel like the scoring thing was often more uh, due to the random chance of how the pieces fell out and how well they uh, matched the requirements we were going for than anything directly attributable to our skill level and how we played the game. In a similar vein, sometimes players will be able to tell you that everything is right for them a little earlier than I would like, and then uh, the puzzle becomes a little bit less interesting because we all know exactly what player A needs or what player B needs. Now, don't get me wrong, the tactics of getting everything around the board to still match everything else is still interesting, and they might not know what you need, but yeah, just sometimes things fall into place a little bit too easily for me. Another potential complaint is something I talked about when I covered Decorum, which is a very similar game in that you are cooperatively trying to kind of move things into the correct positions. Decorum had the issue that because you each knew something but didn't know what the other person was doing, sometimes you would just kind of trade moves back and forth and be like, no, no, this needs to be here. No, this needs to be here. This needs to be here. And this game can fall into the same trap where sometimes you just have like what seem to be opposing goals, although obviously they aren't really because you're working on different columns and rows. But yeah, you can have players kind of undoing each other's moves in a way that can be a little bit frustrating and the limited communication might annoy some people, so uh, just something to keep in mind based on your group. And then finally, the biggest criticism against the game is that while you do have the different movements and while everything is randomized, there's only one kind of scenario here, or I guess like sort of two with the uh, different movement cards. There's only really one way to play. And again, comparing this to something like, I don't know, Paint the Roses or Decorum or even Hanabi, which has like the little like mods in the game to change up the gameplay up a good bit. Quiet House did feel a little stale to us after five or six plays, like we were kind of doing similar stuff each time, especially with the luck of the draw from the deck. Now, I haven't seen what the MSRP for the game is going to be. If, as I imagine, it's like 20 bucks, then I don't think that's really a big criticism of the game. I think you're still going to get a lot of enjoyment out of it, especially if you, uh, you know, play it for a while, then put it on the shelf, then play it for a while, then put it on the shelf. But if the price of this goes higher than I'm expecting, like the 30 or 40, then I don't know if there's enough variety here to make the value worth the price. So that's Quiet House. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.